ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party, the rendering of honors, and then remain standing for the playing of the national anthem and an invocation by Eustace Chaplain Kevin Godfrey. <laughs> Today we gather together to publicly recognize that Colonel Douglas Lowry has the skills, knowledge, and wisdom to be promoted to the rank of Brigadier General. He is entrusted with a higher position of responsibility and leadership commensurate with his new rank. Be always with him as he carries out the duties of his leadership role and all the decisions he makes in the future and the tough times that always come along. Lord, he worked hard to get where he is. We've seen him operate as an infantryman and in the contracting arena. He deployed where you asked him to go. He's done awesome things that American citizens can only dream about. I ask that you continue to bless him even farther and higher than he ever thought possible. Pour out your mighty blessings upon him, also his wife, Tina, their boys, Elliot, Evan, and Ethan. Give them your strength as an army family. Also, ask your continued blessings upon the mighty soldiers, civilians, and the contractors of the U.S. Army Security Assistance Command. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Guthrie. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. And please join me in a warm welcome for General Edward M. Daly, Commanding General, United States Army Materiel Command. Well, good afternoon, everyone. But truly, good morning, good afternoon. We're about four minutes, I guess, from, from noon. So, um, hey, you know, I just start, there's nothing scarier than to walk up to the podium thinking that you forgot your glasses in your office uh, and, you, and you can't read the, the, um, <laughs> the uh, speech. But, um, hey, I, I wanted to start by just saying, uh, first of all, it's such an honor and a privilege uh, to be part of this really momentous occasion today. Um, we're going to do something very, very special in these two promotions today. And notice I said two promotions. Um, I, I will tell you unequivocally, there's no place else I'd rather be than right here, right now. Um, what a great day for the Tennessee Valley. What a great day for our Army. What a fantastic day for our country. Uh, and what a great day for the Cherokee Nation. Um, and I'll explain that in a moment. Uh, and we really appreciate doing it in this setting, in USASAC, 
uh, an organization that really has worldwide impacts on building partner capacity. Uh, and a special thanks to the Lowry family that's here and those watching virtually. So uh, what an honor to be part of this uh, well-deserved and fantastic occasion. Uh, I want to thank uh, Chaplain uh, Guthrie for the invocation. Uh, Chaplain, uh, your words are always heartfelt uh, and spot on, and so how about a round of applause for Chaplain. I want to recognize some individuals, um, starting with my battle buddy, Command Sergeant Major Delgado, who unfortunately couldn't be here physically, uh, but is here in spirit, uh, wanted me to relay his regards and his appreciation for your great work, what you have done, and what you're about to do, Doug. Um, I'm going to talk about Doug and, and Dina and their family in a moment, but I'd like to recognize some of our distinguished visitors. So first, those here physically, I want to start uh, with, and, and I'll start so I don't forget, uh, my better half, Kathy. Um, Lieutenant John, uh, uh, well, I guess Donnie Walker isn't here, um, uh, but I know I think he's watching virtually. Uh, the standard bearer for USASAC, uh, Command Sergeant Major Rice, uh, and uh, I think your wife, Vanessa, was supposed to be here. She's probably watching virtually. So, uh, Sergeant Major, uh, as always, thanks for your uh, great standards and what you're doing for USASAC. Uh, and then uh, Command Sergeant Major Rocky Carr and his wife Roxy and their children Ryan and Riley. Um, great to have you here. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, uh, watching virtually part of family and friends that uh, Command Sergeant Major Carr is the SDDC Command Sergeant Major, part of Army Material Command. So, so let's start. Have a round of applause for those great people. Um, uh, others that are here as well, uh, and uh, uh, Paul Pardew, I had you down as virtually because I thought at this point in time on a Friday you'd be on the golf course, so that's the only reason why I didn't mention you up front, but uh, Paul Pardew, our great ACC Commanding General. Um, I also want to recognize, uh, I think uh, virtually we also have Command Sergeant Major Crosby, uh, Command Sergeant Major Dotson from SMDC, uh, Major General Phil Garant, uh, Major General Retired Will Grimsley, Major General Retired Camille Nichols, uh, Dr. Myra Gray, I think he's watching vir virtually as well. I don't see her here. Uh, Kathy Coviello, uh, Mr. Jeff Parsons, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention a personal mentor of mine, and I know uh, uh, someone who has had great influence on you in your career, Doug, and that's uh, Lieutenant General Retired Joe Martz. And so how about a round of applause for those watching virtually? <laughs> Uh, family recognitions, um, and so uh, again, I'm going to talk about Dina, uh, Ethan, Evan, and Elliot here in a couple of minutes, uh, but I did want to recognize, and I had time to spend uh, with, uh, with Doug's father, Grady, uh, and his wife, Sandy, who came all the way here from, from Clarence, uh, I'm sorry, Claremore, Oklahoma, um, and so, sir, ma'am, uh, thanks not only for coming here but also for the contributions you've made in making this day possible. Uh, and I'm going to talk more about your involvement in this journey called the Army for the Lowry family. So how about a round of applause for uh, Grady and Sandy. Uh, Longtime friend Tabitha Reeves, uh, wife of Command Sergeant Major Retired Chris Reeves uh, from Houston, Texas, All right, right here. Um, and uh, uh, being from Texas, I, I got to say hook him, right? No? Boomer Sooner. Boomer uh, So now, uh, now it's clear. We have, uh, are, are any of the Lowry's not uh, uh, Oklahoma Sooners fans? Okay. All right. So let me, uh, where is that? Uh, here it is right here. So, uh, Doug, come on up here. Take this. This is on behalf of, we're going to give this to you right now, right up front, right? <laughs> this is a Boomer Sooner uh, 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 memorabilia for you, okay? Come on. All right. <laughs> Um, and now I can say, and now I can say, hook them, okay? <laughs> but but at least we have one thing in common. It's Big Twelve, right? So, uh, and then uh, and then I wanted to recognize, especially Doug's mother, uh, uh, Kenna, uh, uh, who is uh, watching in Clamore, Oklahoma. Um, and I just want to say, Kenna, I'm going to talk to you about you a little bit later. But um, thanks for your contributions and your support of Doug over the years. Uh, it's great to have you watching virtually. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about uh, future leaders of the Army uh, that are listening out there. Two uh, JROTC programs. One uh, from Austin, 
right? Our Austin JRTC program here locally, and the other is out of Tol uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. And so uh, what I want to say to these future leaders of our armed forces, uh, thanks for watching and keep being great and doing great uh, and reach for the stars uh, and anything is possible. Uh, and uh, I know we are all proud of you. So have a round of applause for those two programs. <laughs> and then finally, uh, uh, fellow officers, uh, warrant officers, non-commissioned officers, soldiers, our great Department of the Army civilians, those specifically that work in USASAC uh, as part of that, uh, and uh, contractors and friends. And I would be remiss if I didn't talk about all of the supporting cast here that makes an event like this possible. Um, you all are worth your weight in gold. You are fantastic at what you do. This is about the fourth uh, ceremony that I've done in USASAC in the last six months. And I'll tell you, every time it's done, it's done to absolute perfection and standard. And so you all uh, are, are fantastic at what you do. And so I have a round of applause for them. Good job there. <laughs> all right. Um, you know, talking about the USASAC workforce, you know, the 1,500 dedicated, competent, and committed soldiers and civilians, um, what you do each and every day, uh, we like to say that your AMC's face to the world in terms of foreign military sales and building partner capacity, uh, and so thanks for what you do. You know, and the military promotions demonstrate our great lineage and history, and it's one of the ways that we recognize our most precious assets, our people. Uh, and so that's why, as I said in the outset, uh, that there's no place else I'd rather be than right here, right now. Um, it's not only an acknowledgement of a soldier or a leader's past contributions in this great profession, but it's also a way to demonstrate the confidence that moving forward in the future, their potential is unlimited, and we're going to give them increased responsibilities and authorities accordingly. Um, and so when you look at promotion to Brigadier General, this is a big deal. Um, and in particular today, I'm proud to say I know this individual uh, for about the last five or six years, and we absolutely, unequivocally, and without a doubt, made the right choice. Um, of more than 64,000 officers in our Army, only about 300 are generals. And so, as you know, uh, if you're a member of the Army, you demonstrate competence, commitment, character, dedication, professionalism. Well, it's no different as a general officer. Um, and so we're asking Doug now today to take a commitment to continue to earn this selection and promotion today and to pay this forward in terms of the privilege of continuing to be able to serve. And so, Doug, uh, again, I'm proud um, uh, to be part of this today. This uh, occasion is rare in promotions to general officer. Uh, but it demonstrates not only our limit, lineage and history, but our faith and confidence and trust in you to continue to lead in this great profession. And so, um, and so let me just tell you something. There's an additional piece that's really inspiring today. You notice how in the beginning I said this is about uh, a great day for the Cherokee Nation. Um, today, it's really two things we get out of this. Not only a promotion of a great officer to the, to the rank of Brigadier General, but Doug will become, in the next few minutes, the only Native American general officer on active duty. Absolutely fantastic. It's great for our Army, and it's great for your lineage, and so I am just so, so ecstatic about this. And so we can pull up the slide here. And here's a picture of Doug's fourth great-grandfather, Major George Lowry, member of the Cherokee Nation, who was known as Rising Fawn. Uh, he was a soldier, law enforcement officer, planner, translator, and political leader. He was an assistant principal chief of the Cherokee Nation. The medal you see around his neck was given to him by President Washington for his recognition, uh, for his work uh, on the landmark treaty. Um, and you can see he lived uh, and was about uh, 82 years young when he passed, uh, and his contributions were replete. Um, Major Lowry lived in the Tennessee Valley, right here, 
but was forcibly removed from the Oklahoma uh, from the Oklahoma area on the uh, to Oklahoma on the ta Trail of Tears. Uh, if you've done your history and homework, you know what that is, uh, which ran through this part of Alabama. And now, 200 years later, his grandson is about to become a general officer right here on native soil. Isn't that remarkable? How about a round of applause here? So they say that service, selfless service, uh, is a family tradition and often runs in the blood. Uh, and it sure does uh, with the Lowry family. And so you remember how I said that Doug's ancestor, uh, uh, Major Lowry, uh, was a soldier and a law enforcement uh, officer? Well, well, so was his dad and his father. Um, and so he is here today, and I, I mentioned Grady at the start, but Grady, raise your hand, sir, please. Okay, um, Doug's dad uh, was an infantry officer for seven years, served in Vietnam, where he received two Purple Hearts and a Bronze Star. He later joined the Claremore Police Department, uh, then the Oklahoma Highway Patrol, and finally the Oklahoma Boor Bureau of Narcotics, where he finished a 35-year career in law enforcement. Sir, I want to thank you for your selfless service, your example, everything you've done, not only for our nation, uh, but to make this young man who he is today, and I want to tell you from the bottom of my heart, on behalf of a grateful nation, a grateful army, uh, that you and your service have been inspirational. And so how about a round of applause for Mr. Obama. And so now uh, I wanted to mention, uh, so Doug's mother also uh, passed along the, the values of hard work and service and, and Kenna, uh, retired after 20 years with so, uh, Southwestern Bell. And so, uh, ma'am, I know you're watching uh, virtually, and so I want to tell you as well, uh, thanks for, again, your contributions uh, in making Doug uh, the great man he is today. And so how about a round of applause for Doug's mom? <laughs> you know, it goes without say, and we all know it, um, that, uh, that Doug is an incredible leader an accomplished acquisition officer and a disciplined soldier. Uh, but we also know that, and he would admit, that he didn't get here by chance. Um, he's benefited from the love, the steadfast support of, of his parents, his wife, his sons, and many others who invested their time transforming this, uh, at that time when he entered the military, uh, a young man into the, to the general officer he is today. So please jo join me in a round of applause for the entire Lowry family. Now I want to take a couple of minutes to focus on, on Dina. Um, uh, wife of 23 years? 24. 24? 23? 23? 23. Okay, 23. Um, they met Northeastern State University in Oklahoma, right? Uh, Doug was studying biology with a goal to become a doctor while Dina was studying health and human performance on a way to becoming a physical therapist. Um, they were set up on a blind date, but as the word has it, um, Dina didn't like Doug at first. Um, but he was a glass half filled guy and he thought, I can only go up from here. Um, and so they married at Fort Stewart, Georgia. Uh, and began their life together 23 years ago. Uh, and so I wanted to, to say, one, um, thanks for your contribution, sir. I'm going to tell a little story about uh, your selfless service here in a second. Um, but you've been an advocate for military families throughout your career. Uh, and we want to thank you for supporting Doug through the deployments, the sacrifices, um, really running the family, being the matriarch of the family, uh, taking care of these boys who I know have tons of energy uh, and keep you very, very busy. But let me give you an example of the selfless service of Dina. Um, when they were living in Lonsdale, Germany, she overheard an American mother, uh, a Navy wife, talking to a boy who happened to be, have the same names as Ethan and Evan. Uh, and after talking a bit, she learned the woman had to be evacuated from Italy because of a high-risk pre uh, pregnancy. Um, and the family didn't have much with them, no car, few, very few clothes. And so Dina took on the responsibility of making sure they had whatever they needed and even washed her boys while she was in the hospital. Think about that. You have your life full of 
everything you're doing, right? Taking care of boys, taking care of your family, and then you take on this additional, um, um, not even ask, you take on this additional service of taking care of another family simultaneously. And I just want to tell you, that epitomizes Dina um, and everything that everybody's told us uh, over the years about her great service. Uh, Doug, you didn't get here by chance. Um, you're, you're here today because of the family support, but more, more specifically because of Dina's love and support and sacrifices. And so how about a round of applause for Dina and thank her for her great service. So I mentioned, and I didn't misread, uh, two promotions today. So the first promotion we're going to do is we can't promote Doug to Brigadier General without promoting Dina to Major General. Um, so we have to do that up front. And so Doug and Dina, if you can come on up here real quickly, uh, and I want to first do probably the most important promotion today, okay? Again, this is this promotes you uh, to the rank of major general. We hope you put it in a place of prominence in the in the house, so that whatever Doug thinks that uh, he's a little bit too big for uh, for his britches, right? Uh, you you point to this, okay? Um, and so uh, again, thanks for your service, thanks for your sacrifices. How do I round of applause? For And I'll just tell you, a TTP, a technique, tactic, a tactic, and procedure we use in the daily home is, I, I say yes, ma'am, to Kathy all the time. So, Doug, I'd recommend you start saying that, okay? All right? Um, and so I want to talk about the boys for a second here. Um, and so uh, Ethan, 16. Raise your hand, Ethan, so everybody sees you, right? Evan, 14. Uh, uh, both in Austin, and you heard that, uh, that Evan... Uh, is in the JROTC program. I think we're almost to the point where we got Ethan signing up here, right? No, not not yet. I don't know, maybe, <laughs> right? Um, and uh, and I remember at the change of command, I talked about t these two boys, and they are absolutely amazing soccer players, right? And I will just tell you that if you don't get their autograph by the time you leave today, right? Ten years from now, it's going to be worth a ton of money, right? Um, I've heard so much about them, even when they were in Europe playing. So, uh, so I just want to tell you, one, uh, I know you're proud of your mom and dad, but uh, as importantly, they are unbelievably proud of you. Um, you boys are good young men, okay? And I'll just tell you again, keep daring to be great, okay? So how about a round of applause for these two young men? Okay, Elliot, you got to stand up, Elliot. Can you help me out here? Can you come give me a fist pump? Or well, elbow pump, we're gonna do that. Yeah, right, look at that. Okay, so Elliot, right? Elliot uh, just started kindergarten, right? Kindergarten, right? And are you a better soccer player than your brothers? Yeah, that's it, <laughs> that's right. So uh, uh, what I understand is that Elliot not only uh, wants to be like his brothers, but is doing the things his, brother, his brothers are doing right now. And, and so, Elliot, I know that your mom and dad are really proud of you, okay? And, uh, and I know that you're going to be as good, if not better, than your brothers in soccer, okay? Awesome? All right? Okay, how about a round of applause for Elliot? Awesome. Um, now, you have Doug's bio in front of you, and, uh, and, and it has a list of everything that he's done, the assignments he's had. Uh, but I want to talk for a moment about who he is. Um, and as you heard me, uh, and, and a little bit about his story, uh, you heard me earlier uh, tell that he was studying to become a doctor. Uh, but one day Doug was in a ditch, uh, actually working in a ditch, uh, raking up rocks uh, and said to himself, there must be a better way to pay for college. Uh, so he entered ROTC. Is that true? Right? So he joined and was commissioned into the infantry in 1994. You can see his epaulets uh, are showing infantry blue, uh, just like Dad. Um, and, uh, and the rest is history. He quickly learned he liked being a soldier and discovered he also loved leading soldiers. Um, one successful assignment led to another, uh, and he constantly and continuously demonstrated character and excellence in leadership 
And those character and those characteristics, those skills, knowledge, and attributes that I talked about earlier of competence, character, commitment, professionalism, perseverance, etc. And so uh, Doug demonstrated those qualities uh, not only when he was a young lieutenant, uh, but he demonstrates them now here at USASAC as the commanding general. Uh, before then, uh, he commanded uh, a rifle company in 2nd Infantry Division, 2nd and Nun Division. Uh, and you also commanded the 901st Contracting Support Battalion at Fort Hood. Uh, you've done several deployments, uh, Iraq as a battalion commander, as an example. And then when I met you, uh, you were doing great things as the 409th Contracting Support Brigade commander in Germany uh, back about three or four years ago. I, I knew, um, based on what he was doing in support of the European theater, that included operations, uh, Atlantic Resolve, Sabre Strike, Anaconda, uh, and managing about three billion dollars worth of assets and contracts, etc. And what he was doing, you know, it was amazing. I took a trip with him to, to the Baltic uh, states uh, to look at some training, and it was about a three or four day trip. And, uh, and I realized very, very quickly that uh, this wasn't just uh, uh, an officer who was commanding a contracting organization. This was a well-versed multifunctional, not only logistician, but officer who knew operationally what was going on and understood how to support. And he did it spectacularly well. Uh, I was convinced at that point that at some point in time we'd be standing here today promoting him to the rank of Brigadier General. And that's why I said earlier that uh, it's great to see that the Army got it right. Um, Doug's potential, unlimited. And, uh, and I continue to be impressed with his humility, his character, his passion for soldiers, his ability to stay laser focused on the mission and determination um, to do whatever is needed to be done to deliver readiness to the tactical points of contact uh, in support of the sustainment war fighting function. I'm proud to serve with you, Doug. I'm so proud that we're able to do this today. Um, and you're gonna be a spectacular, spectacular general. Doug, uh, the Army's future uh, is in the hands of people like you. And I know without a, do a doubt that I can sleep well at night knowing that we've entrusted him, trusted our Army to the right people. Uh, and so, as I mentioned, continue to earn this rank and the privilege of service. Um, and I'd like to end where I started about the fact that this is monumental uh, because not only are you a great officer, but your lineage in representing our Native Americans. And so, absolutely spectacular day today. I'd like to, to finish with um, a, a Native American proverb that sums up the character needed for this level of leadership. And it says this, man has responsibility, not power. Man has responsibility, not power. Doug, you know that, you live it each and every, uh, every day. And so, again, I'm so proud of you. Again, thanks to everyone for attending. Uh, physically or virtually, uh, and I would like to thank the Lowry family for their continued service and everything they're doing for our great nation. Congratulations again. Fantastic day. May God bless all of you. May God bless the Lowry family, and may God bless these great United States of America. People matter. Winning first. Army strong. Thank you, sir. Colonel Lowry and family, please join General Daly. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain seated for the publishing of the orders. Attention to orders. The President of the United States has reposed special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, fidelity, and abilities of Douglas S. Lowry. In view of these qualities and his demonstrated potential for increased responsibility, he is therefore authorized and directed to wear the uniform and one star insignia of a Brigadier General by authority of the Secretary of Defense.
Hugh Lowry family. You okay, may now be seated. Hold up, hold up. Hold up. So, um, I want to thank you. I want to get one more picture here. Where's the uh, promotion uh, here? <laughs> 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 and oh. this one right here. All right. This is for me, this picture. Sound <laughs> <laughs> good? The Military Officer's Oath is a combination of constitutional requirement, historical influence, and centuries-old custom. The first oath of office under the Constitution of the United States for officers, non-commissioned officers, and enlisted soldiers dates back to 1789, but the Officer's Oath has been changed over the years. The version we use today was approved by Congress in 1884. General Daly will now administer the oath of office. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, State Your Name. I, Douglas Scott Lowry, having been appointed an officer. Having been appointed an officer. In the Army of the United States. In the Army of the United States. In the grade of Brigadier General. In the grade of Brigadier General. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith. That I will bear true faith. And allegiance to the same. And allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. And I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. And that I will well and faithfully. Discharge the office. Just that I will well and faithfully discharge the office. Uh, uh, the duties of the office. The duties of the office upon which I'm about to enter. Upon which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Awesome. Thank you, General Daly. Please be seated. So I also want to. and Elliot, please join your father. Command Sergeant Major Rice will now assist Brigadier General Lowry's sons with the presentation of the General Officer Belt and Pistol. The history of the General Officer's Belt dates back to World War II. Army Chief of Staff General George C. Marshall directed that the belt be issued to all General Officers. The thick leather belt with an 18 karat gold plated buckle and an imprint of an eagle was first produced in 1944. In 1956, the color was changed from brown to its current color black. Today, the occasion and uniform with which the belt is worn are at the discretion of the general officer. of issuing pistols to general officers also began during World War II, when general officers were issued the Colt caliber 380 pocket model. This model was replaced in the 1970s 
by the short-barreled M15. Today, Brigadier General Lowry receives the model M18 9mm General Officer Pistol. The M18 recently replaced the M9 as the U.S. military's sidearm of choice. Thank you, Ethan, Evan, and Elliot. You may now return to your seats. At this time, Brigadier General Lowry and Command Sergeant Major Rice will unfurl the one star flag. A general officer flag has been issued upon promotion to every Army general officer since the flag was first authorized by General Order No. 4 dated August 22, 1903. The flag is on a scarlet background and displays white stars corresponding to the rank of the general officer. Due to the respect afforded this distinctive rank, the flag may be displayed to signify the presence of the general officer. Thank you, Command Sergeant Major Rice and Sergeant First Class Hood. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct honor and privilege to present to you Brigadier General Douglas S. Lowry. This jacket is a lot heavier than that other one. <laughs> First, I want to thank God and my family for always being there, past, present, and future. General Daly, thank you again for conducting this ceremony. Couldn't ask for anyone better. As the newest Brigadier General in the Army, three minutes time in service, I'll probably mess up the protocol here, so uh, give me a little break. So in attendance, we have uh, obviously General Daly, but Miss, Miss Daly as well. Uh, Major General Pardue and your wife Kelly's uh, watching virtually. Uh, Command Sergeant Major Carr, Rocky, Roxanne, Roxy, Ryan, and Riley. Uh, Colonel Jeff Phillips, my longtime friend. It is great to have you here. Uh, for the virtual DV list, we have Lieutenant General Walker, Command Sergeant Major Dotson, Miss Rice, and Miss Coviello. And I'm your your wife is on there as well. Uh, we also have Dr. Gray, uh, our great USASAC DCG. I'm also told out there in Facebook land right now we have 76 people watching live, uh, and a lot of them will watch it o over, over time. Uh, my own personal invites for recognitions. Lieutenant General Martz, my former brigade commander when I was a company commander. Mr. Jeff Parsons, the first executive, direct, executive director of Army Contracting. I served as his XO. Major General Grimsley, my first battalion commander as a company commander. Major General Nichols, former ACC commander. Major General Harrison, former ACC commander. Brigadier General Bass, former ECC commander. Brigadier General Leisenring, former MIC commander. Brigadier General Hoskin, former ECC commander. Colonel Clemmer, my first 
Company XO as a company commander. Colonels Kiel and Welsh, former battalion S3s, when I was in my formative years as a captain. Of special note, and this is pretty cool, and General Daly already alluded to it. Uh, from Decatur, Alabama, the Austin High School JROTC program led by Colonel Ron Childress and Sergeant First Class Taunton. Keep up the black bear pride. My Sergeant Major and I are coming for you guys for PT, just to let you know. From Tulsa, Oklahoma, Will Rogers High School JROTC program led by Colonel Daryl Ping and Sergeant First Class Tilly. It's a small world, Daryl. I actually went to high school with your sister, Teresa. Friends, family, and coworkers, welcome to this ceremony. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day. Lastly, to all the USASAC and AMC people who helped put this together, thank you. It is not lost on me the hours that go on into a ceremony. USASAC is full of some incredible people and you see them on display today. Captain Dietz, Team G6, Protocol, even the lawyer got in the fight with the narration. <laughs> Command Sergeant Major Rice, my battle buddy, all of you, thank you for making this day memorable. There are so many individuals that I can call out by name and tell a story about. I have had a lot of people that I've worked with tell me it's your day, enjoy it. Honestly, I never thought I'd be standing here. To me, this day represents the dedication and unwavering support of my family and every soldier, NCO, officer, and civilian I've ever served with. I truly wrestled with this speech. I had multiple versions, but I want to tell you where I came from and about what I'm going to tell you is about my village. My village of people. This promotion is for them. They are my village and the true reason I am here. As for me, it's real simple. I love being a soldier. <clears throat> it takes a village to raise a child. This is an African proverb that means an entire community of people must interact for children to grow. The villagers look out for the children. When I look back on the journey of my military career, nothing is more fitting than this saying. Dina may even agree that she is still raising me. Without a doubt, I would not be standing here today without my village. And the villagers that looked out for me, they created the environment for me to continue to serve. I apologize in advance for the length of this speech, but I truly want to give praise to what I consider my village. My, to my mom, who's virtually watching, hi mom, raise me to understand love and compassion. She's the most generous person on this earth and has a heart of gold. Always willing to drop what she's doing and offer a lending hand to help those in need. Truly a great mom. Even today when talking to friends I grew up with, there's always a positive story. Thank you, mom. My grandma was the same high energy level. She passed away this winter, but lived a very full life to the age of 95, which brings me to my grandfather, a truly dedicated worker and family man. He was also a soldier, World War II veteran, and like most World War II veterans, he never talked much about it. I do know he was a field artillery forward observer. He served over 400 days in combat. North Africa campaign, invasion of Sicily, and D-Day coming ashore at Omaha Beach around 10 o'clock in the morning. He was awarded a Bronze Star on Omaha Beach for calling naval gunfire on a German battery. And also saw con combat during the Battle of the Bulge at Elsenborn Ridge, which was the northernmost portion of the shoulder. His World War, World War II ended in Czechoslovakia as U.S. forces met up with Russian forces. He told me when I was commissioned, take care of your people and they'll take care of you. What I did not know until my grandmother's funeral this past winter is that on his gravestone it says Silver Star. My grandma and grandpa were part of the greatest generation. My father is a law enforcement officer, career law enforcement officer. Best dad anyone could ask for. Always there any time for advice or tough love. Never missed an athletic event. Led by example when it comes to working hard. He was also a soldier but law enforcement was his calling. And much like generation after generation of Lowry's, that was his calling. He served over 20 years as an undercover narcotics agent. And I'm gonna tell you, he had long hair and, and a beard. 
All of my friends thought I had the coolest dad. <laughs> Many of my friends to this day still refer to him as Hondo, his street name. I bet many kids could not say growing up that they actually got to, and this is, this is a true story, that they actually got to go on drug bus, stakeouts, high-speed chases, ride in helicopters looking for marijuana fields, and be seen with what you would look like a mob of bikers. But these guys were special and they still are. They were committed to something bigger than themselves. I am the fortunate one to know that village. <clears throat> but the best thing my dad instilled in me is to be the man in the arena. This is a poem by Theodore Roosevelt. And Sandy, thank you for all that you do. Your compassion for people and how you always lend a helping hand is inspiring. It is a good thing you have a wonderful sense of humor because I know my father can be trying. My grandma from my dad's side instilled in me the Cherokee history. Every year or so we would drive to Tahlequah, Oklahoma, to the Shalagi Complex, to the Cultural Center, Indian Village, Mural Home, and see the Trello Tears outdoor drama. She was a genealogist and could trace the family back about seven generations. My love of Cherokee heritage comes from her. Without her, I wouldn't have known about Major George Lowry. Although I did not get to know my dad's father, he too was a law enforcement officer after serving in the Marine Corps prior to World War II. When World War II broke out, he went into the Navy and served on the USS Kent. This ship saw battle in the action of Okinawa. He's also a published author of Cherokee fables. They too are part of the gen greatest generations. Two of my best friends one could ever ask for growing up are also part of my village. Tom and Mark love you both and don't worry, no stories will be told. I can honestly say we lived and the bonds that will, and bonds will never be broken. There are a lot of people I grew up with from Claremore, Oklahoma. And I think a lot of them are going to watch this. And if you're out there, hello. And welcome to the ceremony. You never thought your class clown would be standing here, because I sure didn't. <laughs> Some other special guests I must mention by name are most definitely a part of the extended family. The Reeves, the Cars, the Lanfairs, and the Moes. Without a doubt, they're part, they're part of DNA and I's village. Now we just need the Cars and Reeves to move to Alabama, and all will be right in the world. I know a good piece of land right next door, either side. Each one of you have entered our lives and made us better. Thank you for all that you have done. Retired C C Command Sergeant Major Christopher Reeves, I know you're out there enjoying your new adventure. Uh, come, come see us. I also need to acknowledge the world's best mother-in-law, codename Grandma Peggy, and Dina's brothers, sisters, and cousins, as well as their families. Thank you for sharing Dina with me. Without a doubt, I would not be here today. The best part of my village is sitting right in the front row along with Aunt Tab. I met my wife Dina while in college. The first time I saw her at, the, at an ROTC hosted party, she doesn't even remember me. I knew I was going to marry her. Her first recollection is a blind date that General Daly mentioned. We talked, but she was still not impressed. Challenge accepted. <laughs> 11 moves, four kids, and 23 years of marriage later, here we are. She is the epitome of selfless service, empathy, and unconditional love. I know for a fact I would not be here today without you. We have three beautiful children together and one Korean exchange daughter. Our, uh, our fourth child lived with us for three years of high school from Korea. I had the privilege of teaching her to drive. I got to walk her down the aisle at our wedding and she now lives in Dallas pursuing her nursing degree. Ethan and Elliot, and, and Elliot are the best sons Dean and I could ask for. Elliot, our baby, keeps us young, free-spirited, and a wild imagination. You never know quite what he's going to do. He just started kindergarten. He's excelling. His soccer career is on the horizon. Ethan and Evan, you better up your game because he's going to be better. Evan is a freshman in high school. He's our adventurous one. Definitely an extrovert, always has a smile on his face. Not much gets him down, is always willing to take on the tough tasks. But at such a young age, I see you motivating people around you. It is inspiring. Continue to do that.
You are a future leader. I see the way people respond to you. Can't wait to see what life has in store for you. Now I need to tell you about my Army Village and how being a product of positive environments have an everlasting effect. This is also where I could tell story after story after story from my time as a lieutenant to now. I have been fortunate to serve with not some of the best, but the best the Army has. While preparing this speech, I wrote down all the names that I've, of the people that I'd served with and been mentored by. I'm often asked, who's your mentor? And to be quite frank, everyone is. Everyone that I've ever served with has taught me something. There's simply not enough time to share all the names. So I'll share a little bit. But my journey in, into the Army started out when I signed up for Army ROTC at Northeastern State University. They asked if I wanted a scholarship. I said, well, I'm gonna do it anyway, sure, why not? This was a small program of six cadets. The final class prior to it being shut down. It has since been reinstated but they're, and they're doing well. But this program of six, six cadets has produced two brigadier generals, three colonels, and one lieutenant colonel. They're retired. By all accounts, I say it's pretty good. But this was the start of my Army environment. The Department of the Army civilians I've served with have been nothing short of amazing. I've witnessed firsthand a GS-13 walk into a room, take over the log cap discussion, on how best to support an exercise, she ended with, what are your questions? And there was silence in the room. In Germany, I got to see the excitement of GS employees as they supported their first mission alongside a soldier. Even today as the USASAC commander, I see civilians driving policy, plans, and executions at a very strategic level. Now let me tell you about the soldiers. The soldiers that I've worked with have been amazing. I guarantee if you give soldiers a mission, you step back and watch them run, they will amaze you. As a mechanized support platoon leader supporting a mixed light heavy JRTC rotation, I became the HHC commander S1 through S4 and the BMO for a company team. I saw a 77 fuel, fuels guy play the S1. We ended the rotation with accolades from the JRTC observer controllers for the way he operated. He was awarded an ARCOM by the brigade commander as the best S1 during the rotation. Reminder, he was a fuel fueler. Never touched S1 before in his life. I've watched medics perform miracles on real world casualties, placing themselves in harm's way. But my favorite thing about the Army is to observe soldiers succeed, accomplishing something that they never thought they could do. I'm telling you, the U.S. Army's soldier is strong. But the United States Army also has some great non-commissioned officers. I've had the privilege of sending two staff sergeants to a foreign country with my best command guidance ever. Go support this exercise. Not only did they excel, the ambassador asked for them by name on the next exercise. I learned the we in officer NCO relationship. I was summoned as a lieutenant to see the battalion XO. And that's never a good thing when you're a lieutenant. So I told my platoon sergeant I gotta go see the wolf. The wolf was the nickname of the battalion XO given by all the lieutenants in the battalion. He told me no, we have to go see the battalion XO. We are a team. If you have to see him, something bad has happened and I have failed you. So we go up there, and we're standing there, and the battalion XO says, a sister battalion, trucks are all deadlined, and we need your help. And he turns around and walks out of the office. And I thought to myself, so much for we. <laughs> he was five steps ahead of me just within that one sentence. And that great NCO, within four hours, had 17 trucks dispatched to draw a full ammo load for a tank battalion. I've seen a single NCO come into a command and change the culture of an entire command. I have been blessed to walk amongst the best. I've also served with great officer corps, superiors, peers, and subordinates. I was always lucky. I got the best lieutenants, the majors, 
the best battalion commanders. They taught me more than I ever thought, than I ever could teach them. All the bosses I have had, every single one of them have been the best. They let me be me, they valued honesty, they provided sage guidance and advice, and they provided tough love when needed. My peers at all level have been phenomenal. From lieutenant to colonel, these relationships have been everlasting. I started at 315 Infantry to 29 Infantry to 901st Battalion in Fort Hood to 409 CSB to ACC to the ECC and now to USASEC. And I will tell you, everywhere I've been, my peers have been excellent. Now that's now on to the really good stuff. What I just explained was the individual types of people in my village. Family, soldiers, non-commissioned officers, and civilians. Here's where the magic happens. You put these things together and there is nothing, and I mean nothing that they cannot accomplish. In combat, I've seen soldiers, NCOs, officers, and civilians, all of which probably did not know each other, run through smoke without any hesitation and not knowing what lies on the other side to care for some wounded. I've also been seeing soldiers react with courage to enemy fire. I saw at the same time non-commissioned officers leading, and I saw at the same time a young captain commanding. Our um, army is strong because of these villagers, but when they band together like they do every single day, all across the globe, they form a tribe which is unbreakable. Again, I am honored just to be part of that tribe. Hopefully my speech laid this out, but the common denominator in my tribe is people. That's why I'm standing here today. Ordinary people accomplishing extraordinary things. The people in my tribe have most definitely looked out for me. To them, I will be forever grateful. As for me, I will just continue to soldier. Thank you for attending, and to the entire tribe, it will be greater than you ever thought you could be. When the Army finds itself in the arena, that's my tribe, and I will be there as well. And we will win. Use the Sack and Army Strong. Thank you.